close our eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We can come and learn about you this morning and your word. Let it speak to us, to our hearts, to our minds, and let it be, uh, let your word change us, God, to be more like you. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, Miss Wit, it is time to wrap, wrap it out. out. Hey guys, we are continuing going through Philippians 2, 1 through 11. That's right, and this month we're doing verse four. Let's say it three times and then wrap it out. Here we go. Let each of you look, not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let each of you look, not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let each of you look, not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. Philippians 2, 1 through 11. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, he, he, complete my joy by being of the same mind. Having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you know not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Hey, Fidel Kids, we are going to hit our fast forward button today. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, <laughs> right? yeah. Okay, so we are going to pick up where we left off last month. Remember when we were in Exodus talking about Pharaoh and yeah. the plagues of Egypt? Mm. Then we're going to hit our fast forward button all the way to the walls of Jericho because we already learned all the other stuff in between, guys. We That's just right. got to remember it. So, do you have your Bibles in front of you? Yes. Be sure you do. Make sure you had a cup of coffee too. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, and we're going to ask the question along the way. Where, Where is Jesus, Jesus in, in this story? story? Our Bible truth today is God's love and protection over his people point us to Jesus. Are you ready? Let's get started. Now let's open up our Bibles to Exodus chapter 12, all right? Ooh, here we go. Wow. wow. Cool. Well, Pharaoh refused to let God's people go, so God sent nine plagues over Egypt. Wow. But there was one last plague to come. Ooh. What was it? Do you know? Um, no. Well, God told Moses to have each Israelite home kill their best lamb and paint their doors with its blood. Ooh. That night, God sent an angel to kill every firstborn son in Egypt. But when the angel saw the blood over each of the Israelite homes, he passed over them, sparing their son's death as the spotless lamb took their place. Hey, Meg, let's read together in Exodus 12, 12 through 13. Okay, 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 okay. I'm there. Are you there? Yes. Okay, let's read it together. Here we go. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Wow, God protected his people, Meg. But all the Egyptian firstborn sons died, including Pharaoh's. God had finally gotten Pharaoh's attention. So he shouted to Moses, Go, take your people and leave. Wow, God's people were free at last. Yeah. Praise God. I know, so good. <laughs> but wait, wait, where is Jesus in this story? Great question, Meg. Well, 
This great rescue would always be remembered by the Israelites as Passover, the night when death passed over them and God delivered them from slavery. Wow. So cool, right? Well, years later, there would be another Passover lamb. Now, who do you think that would be? Um, oh, Jesus. That's right! Yes, God sent his son Jesus to become the ultimate sacrifice. His blood shed on the cross would cover all who put their faith in him. Wow, that's so cool. I get it. Pass over. He's passed over us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, now let's fast forward a little bit to Exodus 14. Turn your Bibles, Exodus 14. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Here we are. <laughs> now Moses and the Israelites are now standing at the edge of the Red Sea <gasps> with Pharaoh and his Egyptian army oh, no. chasing after them. Oh, no. Ah! They were trapped. How did Moses respond? Wait, we got to find out. Let's read Exodus 14, 13 through 14. Oh, here we go. Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Wow. wow! So then Moses lifted his staff and stretched his hand out over the sea, and the Israelites stood in awe as the waters <gasps> split in two with dry ground beneath their feet. Moses cried, Go! And they began their journey. They're running through the Red Sea. <gasps> That's right, with the Egyptians charging right behind them. But. Once every Israelite had made it to shore, yeah. the walls of the water came crashing down on Pharaoh, oh, swallowing up every chariot and horseman in his army. God's people were saved. Wow, amen. God is so good. But Meg, where is Jesus in this story? Oh yeah, good question, Wit. Wow, well, God knew we too had a roadblock in our journey, Wit. Really? We were trapped also. We were trapped by the sea of sin. And this sea of sin, it's vast and deep, and we are unable to save ourselves. So how can we make it across? We can't go over it. We can't go around it. So God sent Jesus to cross through it for us. He parted the waters, he carried us to shore, and then he swallowed our enemy of sin into the bottom of the sea, crushed it, yeah. Only Jesus could have made a journey like that. That is so right. Okay, now let's fast forward a few chapters. Let's turn our Bible to Exodus chapter 20. <gasps> Whoa! Hey guys, are you there? Yeah. Great! Now we know that God called Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. But even though the Israelites were no longer slaves, they weren't happy. Grumble, grumble, grumble. They were wandering the desert with their sore feet and their empty bellies just grumbling. If this is what it means to be free to worship, then I'd rather Return to Egypt, they said. Yeah. So God sent Moses to the top of Mount Sinai. The mountain shook, lightning flashed, and a trumpet sounded as God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Hey, Meg, yeah. let's read in Exodus 20, 18 through 20. Okay, I'm a little scared. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, it says, now, when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. They stood far off and said to Moses, oh, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us lest we die. Moses said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. Wow. As Moses read God's commandments, he explained to the Israelites, hey guys, uh, listen, God, um, he loves us and uh, he rescued us from slavery and now we can worship him by obeying his rules. The Israelites, they agreed, uh, for a while at least, but over time they would disobey, believing that they could create their own happiness. Oops, well, that's true. Hey, kids, 
let's, let's ask Wit our question. Where is Jesus in this story? Ready? Hey, Wit, yeah. um, uh, where, where's Jesus in this story? <gasps> Great question, kids. <laughs> this is much like our story. God didn't come to us when we were slaves to sin and say, do this, do that, obey me and I will set you free. Nope. God knew we would ignore those rules and disobey him. The Israelites couldn't earn their freedom and neither can we. So God sent his son Jesus to save us and set our hearts free to worship and obey him. We don't obey God in order for him to save us. We obey God because he saved us. Amen, Miss Wit. Okay, now let's fast forward to the book of Joshua. Ready? Turn your Bibles to Joshua 6. Whoa. Whew. It's hot wow, here. where are we now? I don't really know. <laughs> let's find out. Okay, Joshua 6, are you there? Okay, it's a few books over, so glad you made it. Now, at this point, the Ooh. Israelites had been wandering the desert for 40 years. Whoa, oh, their hot. Feet must have been tired. Yeah, <laughs> And when Moses died, God chose Joshua now to lead the people into the promised land. This is Joshua guy. Yeah, now Joshua, it says that he was strong and courageous, oh. but not because he had bulging muscles, Miss Wick. No, no, no. But because he had put his trust in God. The Israelites were so close to the promised land with only one obstacle in their way. Jericho. Mm. Now Jericho was a walled city with towering ramparts and heavy iron gates. And God told Joshua, I have given you Jericho. Wow, that's nice of him. All right, let's read what in uh, Joshua 6, one through two. Perfect. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. Wow, this is gonna be quite a battle, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. So Joshua, he gathered his army with his swords and shields ready to fight. Oh, yeah. Wow. But God's battle plan wouldn't need any weapons. Put those weapons away, Miss Whip. Only trust in him. God sent his people marching around the city for seven days. Just marching, guys. That's all they're doing. Just marching. And on the last day, the Israelites blew the ram horns and shouted at the top of their lungs. And just like that, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Wow, that must have been a sight to see. Wow, yeah. but Meg, we all wanna know, where's Jesus in the story? Oh, yeah, I had a feeling. He's in here, I don't see him. I had a feeling you'd ask that, Miss Witt. <laughs> well, God's battle to rescue his people seems odd at times. I mean, no weapons? Wow. Yeah. We think that he needs our help, like our strengths and our abilities to fight, but all God needs is our trust in him. God fought and won the greatest battle long ago, greater than Jericho. Oh. The towering walls of sin separated us from him and no mighty army of ours could tear it down. But at the cross, Jesus conquered death and defeated our enemy. And all we need to do now is trust in him. Wow. Well guys, next week, we're going to continue in God's great story. We will see how the Israelites move forward into the promised land. Ooh. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word that just teaches us how you are so faithful to your promises. You're faithful to your people in protecting and saving them, especially by sending your son, Jesus. God, I pray this morning for the children that are watching, Lord, that they would come to know you, that they would put their hope and their faith and their trust in you alone. In your name, we all say, amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, parents, don't forget to take a look at our Follower of Jesus page that is found on our family resource page. Now check in with your children if maybe today they've made a decision to follow Jesus. Have a conversation with them, pray with them. Let us know because we'd love to be praying alongside you. And stay tuned kids for our animated video lesson and of course, a wrap up video. Woo, 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 woo. All right guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.